In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Today we begin the Lenten Triodion, meaning that today is the fourth Sunday before the great fast begins. The Lenten Triodion exists, consists of these Sundays that help to prepare us for the coming fast. Today, being the first of the Lenten Triodion, we read about the Pharisee and the tax collector, or the Pharisee and the publican. And we heard in today's Gospel reading our Lord's words. And we've heard them every year as we prepare for Great Lent. But our challenge each year is to hear them anew to hear them once again as though they are fresh words to our ears because it is a parable that the Lord tells us that we need to hear each year so that we may embark on our Lenten journey. It is one of those gospels not only of preparation, but it is one of those gospels of looking inward to ourselves and asking where we stand before God. And the fathers of the church would say to us that every one of us in some way or another are both Pharisee and publican. And our job is to become more and more Christ-like every day. Let us look at the gospel and what our Lord is saying to us this day. It starts out by saying from the Gospel of Luke in chapter 18, verse 9, Also he spoke this parable to some who trusted in themselves. It's an interesting statement. Because as North Americans, we are taught to trust in ourselves. We are taught to believe that we are experts, at least in some things, though many of us think we are experts in everything. But our Lord speaks about trusting ourselves rather than trusting in the Lord and trusting in one another. You and I were born into a community. We were not born isolated by ourselves and given all the gifts by God for ourselves. But each of us in our communities were gifted with different gifts. Each of us received the Holy Spirit himself, but the Holy Spirit gave each of us different gifts so that we might work with one another and so that we might be dependent upon one another and ultimately may understand that all good things come from God above and that you and I have been blessed by God and those gifts we have received are to be used not for ourselves, but for each other. So our Lord tells this parable for those who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others, meaning that they thought that they were perfect and holy and righteous and others could not match up to them, that somehow or another they knew better than everyone else. Even your priests and bishops go to other priests for confession because we know that not any of us possess the qualities and the needed gifts to discern everything and especially not to discern within ourselves. So our Lord tells this parable that we might not be so self-righteous so that we may not be so trusting in ourselves and realize that counsel with others is essential in the Christian community. And he tells this parable. Two men went up to the temple. And if you know, the temple is up on the mount. You have to go up to the temple. So they journeyed up to the temple and then up to the steps and into the temple. So two men went up into the temple to pray. One was a Pharisee, the other was a tax collector. The footnote in the Orthodox Study Bible explains to us how each of them were known within the community. 
The Pharisee is highly respected and a careful observer of the details of the law, whereas the tax collector is despised. Not so different from our tax collectors. And he was despised as a sinner who collaborated with the, with the occupying Roman soldiers, betraying and cheating his own people. So these are the two people who went up to pray. And it's interesting to see which one came down justified and which did not. It says they went up to pray, one a Pharisee, the other a tax collector. And the Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself. Remember, he is the one of high regard. God, I thank you that I am not like the other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this tax collector. And certainly none of us would, be, would like to be like those things. But the Pharisee made the mistake of coming before God thinking that he was perfect. But we know that God alone is perfect. None of us are perfect. And God knows our hearts and our minds and every deed of us from the moment we were in our mother's wombs and for all eternity. And then the gospel says that even as this tax collector, and he goes on to say, I fast twice a week, and this is good, because you and I should fast on Wednesdays and Fridays every week, except this coming week, which is a fast-free week. Or even that I uh, fast twice a week, I give tithes of all that I possess. A tithe is one-tenth. God commanded the people of God that everything was from him and that they could keep 90% of it, but that the first 10% belonged to God. It is a belief that we as Christians hold because our Lord said, not one iota of the law will disappear. So a tithe is what God expects us to give of our possessions. And then the gospel tells us, and the tax collector standing afar off would not so much as raise his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast saying, you and I sometimes come into this temple and we come before God with a sorrowful heart, with a heavy mind and heart, knowing how far we are away from God knowing how sinful and broken we are, and sometimes how much we are filled with sadness and grief and loss. And today, this was the tax collector. He came into that temple and would not even lift his eyes to look at the icons, but simply bowed his head. And he said to God, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. That same Lord have mercy that our choir sings so many times. The Lord have mercy that they took from you. This is your Lord have mercy. When we respond and we pray, we ask God to have mercy on us because we understand how broken and far away we are from God and from one another. And so that tax collector stands before God, putting his trust not in himself, but putting his trust in God. And our Lord tells us, and these are his words, I tell you this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. And listen to our Lord's words. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled. And I assure you, you do not want to be humbled by God because God has his way of humbling every one of us when our pride gets in the way of our salvation. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. Because in humility we find strength, in humility we find clarity of mind, in humility we can see ourselves for who we really are, and then we value the other and realize that our brothers and sisters struggle as we do, that our brothers and sisters need to be lifted up as we do. Our brothers and sisters have many gifts 
that we do not have. And it calls us to come into communion with one another. And so our Lord calls us this day to be as the publican, as the tax collector, as you will, not in his stealing and cheating, but in his seeking mercy and compassion from God and understanding precisely who he is. In closing, I will share with you the uh, verses from the Synaxarian that Paul read this morning in Orthros. And it begins with saying, if you re resemble the Pharisee, run away from the temple, for inside is Christ, before whom only the humble are accepted. In the parable, our Savior Je tells Jesus, in our, I'm sorry, in the parable, our Savior tells Jesus uses a Pharisee, a leader of the synagogue, who was regarded in public opinion as virtuous, and a publican, a tax collector, who was regarded as oppressive, greedy, and a sinner. In their prayers to God, we discover the real hearts of these two men. As we begin our Lenten journey, we're called to discover where our heart really is and how much work we need to do during this Lenten journey. We thus learn the harm, we thus learn of the harm that comes from pride and the good that comes from humility. The Divine Church Fathers sought to alert us to prepare the Christ-loving clergy and laity for the upcoming period of the Great Fast. Therefore, on this Sunday, we are reminded that humility is the greatest weapon against pride as we imitate the humility of the publican to ascend to the divine heights. Humility is a tool given to us by God with great power and great strength. You and I are called to be humble as we stand before God, who knows our hearts and our minds and our lives. Let us stand before him and seek his mercy, his compassion, and his guidance as we begin our Lenten journey. May God bless you and be with you.